Now that the image is saved, we can go back and we can create a before and after image to show the day and the night at the same time. There's a couple of ways to do that. But first of all, it's done in the imaging software. So you need to either close this or minimize this program. And we'll go back to where we left off in the imaging software. And here is the picture before we put the lighting effects in. We don't need that picture, so I'm going to close it also. So the first thing you want to do is open up the image that you saved, that was a JPEG file, as your after without the uh, labels and uh, text in it. So we're going to open up this image. So now we have the lighting effects image open. And now if you want to put a before picture up in the corner, this is how you'll do that. It's very simple. If you simply go back to file, import object because we're going to bring it in as an object. We're going to bring in this image here we call tutorial one. That's the one where we have brightened it up a bit. It's going to ask you if you want to size it down. Say yes. I need to zoom out so I'm pressing F10. You can see it's still a pretty big picture. I'll size it down and I'll just put it up here in the corner. So then you could go in and label that, which we've shown you how to label it, but we'll do it again here in a second. So that's one way of doing it. You take the after picture and you put the before in as an object. Now another way to make a before and after is you could put the two images side by side. But to do that you need a blank canvas. Before we make our blank canvas I want to know how big I need to make it. So to do that I'm going to go over here to file click on background image and click on resize. This gives me the size of the picture in the background. It's 950 by 1046. So I want to make a blank palette that's going to be double the width which would be 900 no 1900 pixels and the height is going to be the same 1046 so I'll cancel that I go up here to file new and I'll put in here 1900 and 1046 and click OK so now I have just a white canvas I'm going to zoom out by pressing F9 a couple times and now I want to import both the pictures so we go back here to file import object and we'll get the before and we'll just place it here and I go back to file import object and I'll get the after and we'll place the after here and again at this point you can add text to it or you can print it out just like this without text it's all up to you so you've got the option of doing them side by side or doing it as a box within the same picture. Let's go over how to add text to the picture again. You go up here to tools and we'll go to add text and then we type in the text that we want in this white box here. So first you click there, type in your text, click on font, make sure that you have the right color. I want to do white text on this so I'll click on white. Again you can change the type of font that you want just like all other Windows programs. So we'll change the font type, make it bold, make it 20, click OK, and then click OK again, and you can see that the text is here. Now, if this happens to you, it probably will, because I put in two lines of text. It's just showing one. All you have to do is open up the box a little bit more, and you'll see the phone number there. So now we're ready to print this picture out. There's a couple things you should know about printing to get the best results. First of all, you should go here to File. Go to Program Defaults and make sure that Printing Covers Entire Page is checked. If there's no check mark in there, simply click on it. If there is a check mark, leave it alone. What this does is it will take your picture and it will detect what size of paper you're printing on and it will size the picture to fit that piece of paper perfectly. So it's a great little command. It works good. A lot of times you print things out, they're too small to fill up the paper or they're too big. This fixes all that. So click OK. Now it's set. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Then you can just go to the print icon select the type of printer that you want to print with and click on properties and make sure your printers properties are set to at least these three things most of the time the pictures will be printed out in landscape mode so you want to make sure that you select on landscape mode 
I'm printing on a laser printer so I don't have the option for photo paper but if you're using an inkjet which is what I suggest make sure the setting is set to photo paper wherever that is and make sure it's set to uh, color and the highest quality of color settings in your printer settings so again those three things are landscape photo paper and high quality uh, color printing. Once that's all set, all you got to do is put the number you want printed and click OK like all other Windows programs. You may also want to email this picture to the customer or co-worker. To do that we have a command in the program under file called send JPEG email. When you click on that it'll automatically make the file that's on the screen a JPEG and attach it to your email in Outlook, Outlook Express or Windows Mail. It will not work in Yahoo, Google or Hotmail. Those are online email services. You have to save the file as a JPEG and then attach it. It will not do this automatically for those. Uh, so if you're trying to do it that way and you're wondering why it doesn't work, that's why. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this out and send it to myself. So you fill out all this information like any email and click send. So now I'm going to bring up Outlook and here's the email I sent to myself and here is the picture we just click open here's the picture that I emailed with the text and the before picture up in it now if you use an online email I recommend that you don't but if you do um, what you want to do is save this file again as a JPEG so if we go file save as and we'll make sure it's a JPEG file pay attention again to where you're saving it and I'm going to just call this one underscore email so now you would go in and find this file, attach it to your email program, and then send it that way. Now remember earlier when I told you to save your file as a JPEG and a work in progress LND in case you want to go back and change it. So first of all, let's take a look at both those files. Right now we have the JPEG file on the screen. And let's go to the LND file. They look exactly the same. The difference is with the JPEG file, I cannot pick on any of these light fixtures and move them because basically it's like they're glued down to the background. But if I go here to the work in progress LND, I could click on this light, I can move it, I could size it, I could actually delete lights if I want to, replace it with something else, move them around and adjust them. You can see it's much, much faster to adjust things with a work in progress slash LND than it is with the JPEG. So that's why I suggest you do it. Of course, you don't have to. That's your choice, but just remember I told you. Well, now that you've learned all the basics on how to use the landscape lighting software and the landscape lighting effect software, we're going to now get into some advanced tutorials teaching you some stuff that you can customize the program. It's a little more complicated, so you may have to watch this section of the movie two or three times, but I'll try and go over it as best I can without making it too confusing. So the first thing you may want to do is to add new lighting fixtures into the program. You may have pictures of lighting fixtures, or you may want to grab them from the internet, and you want to put them in the program. So we're going to cover how to do that. So the first thing you want to do is create a blank canvas to work on. So we're going to go up here to File and we're going to go New and let's make something about 800 by 800. Click OK and you'll see that it creates a white canvas. White doesn't really work when you're doing the editing of light fixtures because they're almost always on a white background so you can't see bad edits. So I want to change it to say black. So I'm going to define an area here. So I went to the Define Area Tools. I grab a rectangle, I click OK, and now I want to make this black, so I go to Tools, Colorize, click Choose Color, pick black from the color wheel here, uh, take the amount of color, turn it to 100, click OK, and as you can see, that turned black. Now I want to combine that with the background so it doesn't be moving around on me. So I go up here to Object, and I go Combine with the background. So now I've got a black background set. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to capture things from the internet. I went to FX Luminaire's website and I found the place where they have their path lighting fixtures. And let's say I want to grab these and put them in the program. Even though they're already in the program, I'm showing you how we do it. So first of all, 
pick the one that you want and then what you do is you hold your mouse over it and then right click and you click on save image as then you want to navigate to the folder or where you want to save that image I had already actually downloaded this but we're just gonna click save now notice before I click save this is a PNG file PNGs are lossy excuse me they're not lossy they're lossless compression which is better and you're gonna see why so PNG is gold and you're you're in good shape if you find images that are PNGs it's JPEGs that are our problem so I'm going to click save and I'm going to replace that one. So now I've just saved that to my hard drive. So let's minimize this. Now I want to bring it onto the screen. So I go up here to File, click Import Object, and it was a PNG, so we'll set this to PNG here. Bring that image in. And as you can see, it's pretty much already edited, and there's nothing really I have to do. So all I have to do now is either save it or uh, save it as an LOB, which is a proprietary format with a transparent background. Either one will work, but let's show you how to do it. We'll go to File, Export Object. I want to change this to LOB. I'm going to give it a name. So the name that you're going to give it uh, should mean something to you, either the exact name that it is on the website or whatever you really want to name it. If you look here, these are LED FX path lights. This one was copper so I will at least give it that much information and it's PF whatever that means so let's type that in so I've typed in the name here but before you just go save it anywhere make sure you know where you're saving them and better yet actually make a folder if I'm going to be capturing 10 or 20 uh, light fixtures make a folder for that company and save them in there in Windows uh, 7 you could just click create new folder and I'm going to call this FX Air. open up that folder and save that file in there then you would just repeat the process for all the other lights pretty simple so let's delete that one and now I want to bring in one that I know is going to be a JPEG so I've opened up uh, the Kitchler website and let's take a look at a couple of these images you'll notice that these images here have landscaping and things in the background they are going to be harder to edit not impossible it could all be done but it's just going to be more work but this one here is seems to be cut out so I'm going to click on it and it brings me to this page here where again where to go it has a pretty good picture here it has them in different colors and I just clicked on it and it's given me an even better shot so I want to save this again it's already cut out so I right click and click on save image as and I'm going to just save this one under objects click Save and let's close this and go back into the program go to file go to import object and this was a JPEG file that I just saved so I gotta set this as JPEG and this is the file that I just brought in it asked me if I want to size it down I'm gonna say no and look what's happened you see all these artifacts let me zoom in so you can see it these artifacts here are because JPEG files are lossy compression which means it's going in and it's making a combination between the white and the gold of this particular fixture and it it compresses things but it, it degrades the quality of the image so this one's going to be pretty hard to cut out nothing like the one we just did not impossible again but it's work so there's two ways you could do this one way is to use the magic wand tool so if we go up here to object and click on magic wand you see everything around it has turned red if I zoom in and I click on any of this white here it takes out a lot of the artifacts from the JPEG but you gotta be careful that you don't click too close to the light fixture itself um, and it will take away some of it so you gotta pay attention to what you're doing again this takes some time so I'm not going to bore you uh, I just made a mistake you'll see how I clicked a little too far here if this happens to you I can pretty much guarantee it will just click undo to bring it back one step so I'm going to go through and you see actually I got some over here and it created a little bite out of the image so this is more work doing it this way it takes much longer be aware of that I'm going to actually have to undo all this to get back 
to where that bite was taken out. And it was taken out, if you look closely, it looks like there's actually a little whiteness going in there. So when you click on the area here, it got it. Okay, so I'm going to show you the other way to do it. So I'm going to pause this and do the best I can with the magic wand.